On the right side are three buttons offering us different methods of viewing our worksheet. Rolling the mouse over them gives us small text boxes with each button's name. This method of identifying buttons, mousing over them, works with most of the Excel buttons as well as with all other Microsoft Office products. With these buttons, we have the ability to view the workbook in the normal view, the page layout view, which may look reminiscent of a Microsoft Word document, and in page break preview, which shows where page breaks fall. No matter which mode we view our worksheet in, the ribbon and other navigation items are the same. The next object is the zoom slider, a small scroll bar to the right of the view buttons. Click and drag the slider bar to zoom in and out of the document. When the position of the scroll bar is in the center, the document is at 100%. Now that we've gotten to know the Excel environment a little better, let's return to the ribbon to see what these options can do for our documents. The ribbon and its context-sensitive features gives us access to all of Excel's commands. Click the Home tab to return to that mode. As soon as we select it, we see the commands specific to entering text and numbers and formatting our worksheet. Home is probably the most often used tab in Excel, and it's a good place to start when creating a worksheet. Right-click anywhere on the worksheet grid, and a special menu opens displaying many of the same commands found above on the ribbon. These are shortcuts to commonly used Excel features. These tools are used so often that Microsoft has created a shortcut menu to allow quick access to them. Click outside the menu to close it. Let's return to the ribbon and look through the different tabs so we can understand what each does. The Home Tabs tools are divided into seven main tool areas. The Clipboard allows us to cut, copy, and paste items into the worksheet. The brush icon is the format painter, which we will use later in this lesson. The font tools change the look of our text, including font type, size, and color. Alignment lets us change document formatting and spacing. And number applies a particular number format or style to a cell. Styles lets us apply a more complicated preset format or style. Cells controls adding and deleting cells and deciding what the cells will look like. And finally, editing offers us different ways of finding and sorting items in our cells. In all Windows applications, there are two ways to access commands, by using the mouse or by using a combination of keystrokes on the keyboard. Moving the cursor over any of the tools in the ribbon opens a text box describing that command. Roll the mouse over the Paste tool in the clipboard area and a small box appears identifying this tool. Notice the Control and V inside the parentheses. This shows us the keyboard shortcut for the paste command is to press the Control and V keys on the keyboard. As we become more familiar with Excel and move through this lesson, we'll use these shortcuts for our commands. A small icon appears in the lower right corner of some tool areas. This is the dialog box launcher. It means there are more advanced features available. Click the arrow icon in alignment. This is the Format Cells dialog box containing more advanced features and options. Click the X in the upper right corner to close this box and return to our Contextual tabs. Select the Insert Contextual tab. This tab opens a different set of tools, grouped into areas. The Tables Area tools lets us specify tables in an Excel document, a new feature in Excel 2007, and determine how those tables are placed and how cells within them behave. The Illustrations section is where we can add shapes, pictures, and other graphical elements. Charts lets us create different types of charts. Links lets us add hyperlinks to our worksheet. And Text lets us add graphical text elements to the document, such as text boxes, word art, objects, and symbols. Notice many of the tools have little arrows either underneath or just to the right of them, depending on the size of your computer screen. When we click the arrow, a gallery opens. In previous versions of Excel, dialog boxes often displayed numerous options, and sometimes it could be difficult to know which one to choose. In this version of Excel, galleries provide users with specific options related to the task you're working on. Let's see how it works. In the Charts area, click the Line tool. 
A general gallery opens listing the different types of line charts we can choose to create. Selecting one of the items creates a chart of that type. Close the gallery by clicking anywhere in the worksheet or click the Tool button again. Click the Page Layout tab. Page Layout focuses on the look of the worksheet and how text and objects are displayed. Themes control the overall look and feel of our workbook, including colors, fonts, and effects. Themes are another new feature in Excel 2007. Click Formulas. Formulas are the heart of Excel and control our ability to perform detailed calculations. We'll spend a lot of time learning about formulas in the next several lessons. The Data tab tools allow us to sort and filter our data, perform basic data cleanup, and pull in data from external sources. The tools on the Review tab are used as the last step in proofing, editing, and keeping track of a workbook's progress. These tools are especially helpful when two or more people are working together on a project and they want to share comments, edits, and general changes as they move forward. Finally, the View options control how we see our workbook and worksheets on screen. As we saw earlier in this lesson, these are Normal, Page Layout, and Page Break Preview, also available on our status bar at the bottom of the screen. We are not going to go over every option in the Contextual tab because we will use many of them in our lessons. I think we're ready to move on and start creating our own spreadsheet.